Hi, ethics students. Uh, this is the second of two lectures on Friedrich Nietzsche. So in the first lecture, we saw that Nietzsche distinguishes between what he calls master and slave moralities. Uh, the master morality, the nobleman, the powerful, the master is the good. Um, the opposite of to be good is to be weak, to be slavish. Um, and we talked about that as a class distinction, basically. Uh, if you have power and wealth, you're good. And if you lack those things, you're bad. Um, so for Nietzsche, the, the powerful man does whatever he needs to do to survive. Um, and there isn't anything right or wrong about it. Um, so just as the, the predator, the lion, doesn't think of eating the lambs as being either right or wrong, it's just natural. It's just what has to happen. If you're going to have winners, you're going to have losers. If you're going to have lions, you have to have lambs. Um, the slaves, of course, look at it completely the opposite, right? They think of um, their slaughter as being evil. They see it in moral terms, the way we would think of it today. So <clears throat> I want to talk about what Nietzsche um, likes and dislikes out of both of master and slave moralities. He clearly thinks that uh, Western civilization has moved beyond um, the distinctions of good versus bad. Uh, we've moved into a slave society brought by Western religion using guilt and fear to get the masters to change their behavior. Um, but he thinks it's time for, um, for Western civilization to move beyond what he called the slave morality. Um, the rules are very comforting. They make people uh, feel good and protected. They've civilized us. Um, but Nietzsche thinks that the fear and the guilt have been really uh, harmful uh, in terms of holding a Western civilization back. Uh, at least those few really talented individuals that he thinks that um, those rules shouldn't apply to. So of the master and slave morality, uh, Nietzsche, I'm sure you could tell from the reading, uh, really prefers the master morality. He, there's no question. Um, he really admires it, especially like the powerful, the warriors, uh, the masters, the strong, the brave, the courageous. Um, he has a, a, a lot of admiration for them. The people who make excuses in life, um, right, who always come up short but have some sort of explanation, um, right, he doesn't care for at all. Um, and he clearly likes the master morality more than the slave morality. But there are aspects of both of them that he likes or dislikes. So with the master morality, uh, he refers to it as a yes saying to life. He thinks that the masters uh, are very creative. Uh, they're very confident in themselves. They don't have these rules that they have to follow. They just live their lives however they see fit. They don't ask anybody to approve of them. Um, they just go out and live their lives however they wish, which he finds to be very healthy. He thinks this is a really good thing. Um, of course, the problem with the master morality is that there were only a very few people who um, were in that position. The vast majority of people were weak and slavish, didn't have any kind of power. Um, so while it was healthy for the masters, um, it was really quite um, oppressive. Uh, when it comes to everybody else. Um, and so if you had someone who was born into the slave class who perhaps really had something to offer to the world uh, in terms of creativity or uh, scientific achievements or something like that, they probably wouldn't have been in a position to be able to do anything about it because um, they just didn't have the power and ability to be able to, to act on it. Um, what Nietzsche likes about the slave morality is that it has civilized us. Um, it has allowed a kind of freedom um, that didn't exist, at least previously, for the slaves. The big problem that Nietzsche has with the slave morality um, is that he refers to it as a no saying to life. Because now people are made to feel guilty about doing things that offend other people that they don't like. So Western religion has brought all these rules, right? If you think about the Ten Commandments, Nietzsche would point out, right? Think about the form that the Ten Commandments take. There are a series of rules that tell us what not to do. Do not kill, do not steal, do not covet, do not lie, right? Um, so they limit uh, behaviors. 
and it's very comforting, and the slaves no doubt like that. Um, but Nietzsche thinks that uh, introducing things like fear and guilt uh, has really held humanity back. Um, from Nietzsche's perspective, people ought to be able to think what they want to think. They should be able to say what they want to say. They should be able to do what they want to do. Now, he realizes that in saying this, that most people just want to have, you know, their little house with their little patch of land and, you know, their wife or husband and their two and a half kids and their dog. And they're not really worried about, like, uh, going out there and being creative and uh, thumbing their nose at the rest of the world. Um, they just want to sort of get by day to day. And Nietzsche, right, he just sort of ignores them. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. He really thinks he's talking about those very few uh, individuals who um, are really talented, really creative, uh, whether it's uh, in the arts, um, music, uh, science, business, um, athletics, right? Whatever their field might be, Nietzsche says the way you measure a society is by allowing those those few really talented individuals to achieve as much in life as they possibly can. And the role of everyone else basically is to just stay out of their way. Um, so Nietzsche did not like, um, you know, um, a lot of rules that would restrain these few really talented individuals from uh, doing uh, whatever it is they could achieve. So things like political correctness, um, Nietzsche would not have liked people who organized protests about the content of music lyrics or movies or books. Nietzsche would have had no patience for that. He thought that that's what a society has to learn to go beyond. Um, and again, allow those few really talented individuals to live their lives however they see fit. And if the rest of us don't like it, well, that's just too bad. Um, but he would point out that if there's... Um, art you don't like, or if there's, you know, movies you don't like, if uh, there's scenes that are shot in, in certain ways that you don't approve of, well, then just don't watch them. Uh, don't listen to the music you don't like, but don't interfere. Don't get in the way of other people's ability to be able to experience those things if that's what they want. Um, so Nietzsche thinks we have moved beyond the master morality. We've... Uh, Again, Western civilization has moved into a slave morality, but Nietzsche sees himself as being the person who's going to spur on the next move in morality. And that's the, the meaning behind the title of the other book I mentioned, Beyond Good and Evil. We've gone beyond good and bad, the master morality, um, and now we need to go beyond good and evil. We need to get rid of these antiquated terms. They have been unhealthy uh, for humanity. And we need to really allow those few uh, talented individuals to express themselves however they see fit. Right Now, um, what he wants to do is, is uh, combine the best aspects of both the master morality and the slave morality. So in the master morality, the good man was sort of the warrior. Um, and in the slave morality, the good person is more like the saint. So we talked about, you know, someone like Napoleon being sort of representative of the master morality or Alexander the Great, somebody like that. Mother Teresa, probably the standard example of the good person in a slave morality, thinking of others, doing for others, selfless, um, those kinds of things. What Nietzsche wants to do is um, uh, combine them, the best aspects of both of those things, into what he called the superman in the German is the Übermensch, the overman. The superman is the one who can go beyond the rules of everyday society. So he's willing to take responsibility for himself in his life, um, the way that people are held morally accountable by a slave morality, but he also has power. But for Nietzsche, it's not a power over other people. So I think that's why he would not have approved like uh, of someone like Hitler, for example. Um, rather, the Ubermensch, the Superman, has power over himself. Um, so he has he holds himself to the highest standards. He doesn't make excuses for himself, um, and uh, lives his life with all the gusto and uh, creativity and ability that he has. 
Now, what makes Nietzsche a, a relativist is that if you were to ask Friedrich Nietzsche whether or not something or someone is good, Nietzsche would say, you immediately have to ask, for who? According to a master morality, according to a slave morality, according to sort of this ubermensch that he's talking about, the Superman. Um, so morality is always evolving. It's always changing. It's going from one system to another. Uh, we talked about the transvaluation of values, the changing of the moral systems themselves. And he sees himself as starting the next revolution in morality. Um, but of course, it's very dangerous. Um, because if you think the rules, the moral rules, are just things that human beings have, have made up in order to control powerful men from exploiting us, um, and that's all they are, you have to ask what the limits are. So for those of you who like movies, um, there's a movie called Rope by uh, Alfred Hitchcock, um, which is based on a Leopold and Loeb murder case where these two college students... Uh, strangled a fellow student to death just to do it, uh, what's called a thrill killing. And so Hitchcock made this movie call, uh, starring Jimmy Stewart called Rope. Um, it's a continuous action film, and these two guys uh, strangle uh, a friend. Um, and it's it's really qu it's quite a movie. Um, and the, the stronger of the two characters, clearly, um, throughout the um, movie just quotes Nietzsche, right? We're the powerful, we're the strong, we're the ones who get to decide who lives and who dies because we're the supermen that are beyond the average everyday person. Now, to be fair to Nietzsche, he didn't think of his, his um, uh, ideas of morality as being applied to justifying things like homicide. Um, but that's the danger of being a relativist, right? How far are you allowed to go? Um, he really thought of his ideas as applying to creativity, again, to really talented people. Um, so if there are people doing scientific experiments that can help humanity, then from Nietzsche's perspective, we shouldn't limit their ability to do that research. Um, or if there are filmmakers or musicians, again, that push the envelope, um, then he thinks that the rest of us should stay out of their way and let them write and sing whatever lyrics they have or paint whatever uh, images they like or make whatever films right appeal to them and again if you don't like them you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, watch them but let's not interfere with anybody else's ability to view them if they wish